Get the hell out of my way. It's a merge. It's not the SAT. Let's get a move on, you piece of garbage. You didn't even use your directional. <laughs> In other words, I am late. <laughs> In other words, Ant's getting car sick. <laughs> hey! Dang. Yes, see? Oh my That's- God. Yes, hello. Welcome to the Pop Up with Paul and Friends. Welcome back. If you're back, welcome for the first time. We had such a fun week with this show. We had our first really big clip come out of this studio this week. It was with Joe Gaudette doing his amazing Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation, calling a fancy restaurant in LA. A lot of people saw that, so thank you guys for sharing it. If you're here this week from the clip, thanks for coming back. We're here every week, and you know what we're doing in this show in the studio? We're just making fun moments. We're in a garage that looks like a living room, and we interview all walks of life and have a ton of fun and i'm very excited for this week because you know i've known this guy for a long time you've seen him on america's got talent he had a great golden buzzer moment on that show heidi klum how you doing hey how you doing (laughs) how you doing hey how you doing (laughs) he's since gone on to join the stage with heidi klum some more open for jay leno tour the world released a ton of albums including his new one which is out now and I've, I've always been a fan of his work and his voice and his singing. He's a modern-day Rat Pack-style crooner. He's, he's our Frank Sinatra. And I'm so glad over the years I've gotten to know him and become friends with him. This show is called Pop Up With Paul and Friends. I like to have interesting friends on. I also like to be joined by friends, which is why my boy Rico Graziano joins us for this episode. Because this might possibly be the most Italian episode in the history of interviews I'm so glad this happened. Put your hands together for Sal, the voice, Valentinetti, everybody. This is the most food the studio has ever seen. I'm so honored to have you here. You always show up. Sal always shows up, our guest today, with a crew, with a posse. I don't think I've ever seen you roll alone anywhere. No. I appreciate that about you. Because I need I need at least three, four people to explain how I am the way I am. Right, right. It's like <laughs> you a know? disclaimer, right? Right. The, bu- the buffer, the people buffer. Naturally. Yeah, and so we have your friends here, guys. Thank you for coming. What's up? Anthony Sharada. Yeah. Greg Anthony Heinrich. Going. Greg, what's up? How you Anthony Sharada with, you uh, uh, <laughs> what's your company? Is there Sharada? Sharada Public Relations. Sharada oh, Public we got Relations. Oh, in the house. Oh, nice. right, so, we oh. can't, so how many woke jokes can we do? Are we going to get canceled? No. I'm not that kind of PR. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, okay, I was about Thank to God. say. I'm, the worst, he, kind he's, of PR, I'm the worst. Like the worst kind of dirty PR that you ever want to be with? I'm, Anthony, I'm totally fine with see, that. Anthony, Anthony's handling my, my TikTok. So oh, his, good. Right. His his goal isn't to make me less controversial. Good. Yeah. It's it's to make me worse. You want to piss yeah. people off, which right. actually really sells these days. I don't. We should not be safe. We should be making people talk about things, right? What is safe? I don't know. Safe, I feel like safe is is uh being around people who are ready to teach you yeah. instead of uh instead of uh you know knock you down. Do you feel like you how long have you been in LA right now? Uh, well, I've been in and out of LA gosh since 2016 since America's Got Talent. I came stayed for a couple of months and then every every you know couple of years I'll 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 rent a place out here. I'll stay for a few months when I do a record I like to stay. Uh, I, I stay with my, my musical director, Dave Damiani, my producer. Um, I, I try to get out here as much as I can, but always with the idea that I'm going back to New York. Yes, I feel the same way when I moved here. You're not delivering yeah. pizzas anymore. No, 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 no. I, we we no, gave that up a long time. Maybe you've been away for a long time. You haven't heard. They haven't told you. <laughs> I don't share shoes. No I On the show, they told everyone that I was a pizza guy from Long Island, but they didn't say which pizza place I was at. So now... Fans of mine from all over the world, when they come to New York, they come to Manhattan, they get on the Long Island Railroad, they take the get off wherever, they find a pizza place, and automatically they go in and like, is this where Sal the Voice was delivering pizza? <laughs> and fi- you see half the pizza aisles on Long Island, they're like, sure, what do you want? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. whatever, we'll oh, sell Sal, Sal's all, he's in the so, back working. So now, right now when I go to pizzerias, it's like, it's almost like, a, like an unspoken thing. Like I could, you know, that, that, that I'm like, you know, whatever I need. Like like for my goddaughter's birthday, sure. I had the pizzeria do the, the eight for her. You know, she's eight years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on a pizza because she didn't want cake. I got her cake That's last year girl. for her birthday. She needed. Yeah, she goes, I, I want. I said, What do you want? Pepperoni. This is why you don't ask a seven year old what they want. What do you want? I want uh, um, a chocolate with strawberries. So I go, Greg, I get a chocolate cake with strawberry filling. She opens. She, she takes a bite of it. She goes, 
I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> so this year I said, listen. Trust me, I know, my four-year-old. I said, Victoria, we're not messing around. <laughs> what do you, I'm coming over for your birthday. I was, I, was, uh, I was heading out to Poland this year. So I had a red eye late at night to, sure. to Europe. So just before that, I said, what do you want? She goes, pizza. I go, great. <laughs> that I can manage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. I could figure out for everybody. Get the corner on that market, man. All right, right, right. Market. Well, Come you know, on. it's uh, like I said, it, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, America's pizza boy mm. now, you know? That's a great branding for you. you should get, that's a good TikTok. Make sure you think of Entourage when he calls the guy pizza boy all the that's time. That's it. Listen, yeah, before yeah. we like we basically started, but I want to do a proper introduction. I want to get everyone to do a cheers right now. Oh, no sure. one has ever showed up with more food and wine and booze than this guy right here. I'm really grateful you're here. Give it up for Sal the Voice, everybody. Yeah, because hey. it's because I got a vowel at the end of my name. That's it. That's uh, it. Valentinetti. Uh, I like calling you Sal the Voice. Do you do you prefer uh, certain titling? You go by Sal the Voice. Paul. You can call me whatever you want as long as you don't oh, call me late for dinner. Bye to the P.O. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby. <laughs> that sounds great. No, like, so so I used to hang out at a, at a cafe, and a lot of guys would be over there, and they all had different nicknames, you know, like uh, uh, I had a friend, Sally Bread, as a bread route. My friend, Sal the Undertaker. <laughs> the mm -hmm. uh, Roman Ellie and Son's Funeral Home. You whack them, we pack them. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I was the singer, so they said, Sal the Voice. Which, what I think about, and I want people to understand out of the gate when we talk to you, is there's only one other singer in history who was known for being the voice. Right. We all know who we're talking about here. And I don't know a single singer who sounds more like him than you. And do people tell you that often? They, I'm talking about Frank Sinatra. I mean, nobody got it. Yeah, they they, they do, and I I think it's uh you know the the raspiness and and the um, it's the timbre though, even the way you talk, it's the timbre of your voice. I think it's just because we we come from kind of the same place. Sure. You know, we're, we're, Frank Sinatra and I we're not uh, we're not children of New York City. We're children of New York City adjacent. So we grew up in the neighborhoods where all the people who would commute into the city to work lived. Right. See, New York City is a lot like um like one of those. Uh, all-inclusive resorts in Montego Bay, <laughs> right? Nobody who works there can afford to live there, Yeah, right? So good. we all go elsewhere. Uh, Sinatra grew up in, in uh, Hoboken. Hoboken, Hoboken, New Jersey. Well, we're from I grew Jersey, up in, so we, we yeah, hold on. Hoboken. There you go. Frank Sinatra. Hold on, Jersey, Hoboken. big. That's right, that's right. And, and I grew up amazing. on Long Island, so. You know, there's that's a right. funny story about Frank Sinatra. A friend of mine who lived next door to Frank Sinatra grew up next to him, old guy. So when Frank Sinatra died, people were driving past the house, mm -hmm. this, that. So he started selling bricks, from Frank Sinatra's house to these people. I said to him, and he was, he was getting like $20 a brick. I said, Sal, how'd how you get these uh, whatchamacallits? Like, how'd you get these bricks from me? He's like, they're not fucking from Frank Sinatra's house. Like, <laughs> he, goes, he goes, this house fucking burned down. It was made of wood. You know, I started laughing. I was like, ah, that's what fucking Leave you it know. to an Italian. We'll always yeah. find a way to make a little That's hustle, the right? most Italian. I got a cousin. He's half Jewish, half Italian. If he can't get it on sale, he'll steal it for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I love about your, the fabric of you, man, where you're from, Sally the Voice. You know, um, Describe how that is for you, you know, touring the world now and, and sharing... Very who you cool. are? Like I don't know more charismatic Italian great singing guy than you. And we're like we're we're I've, we've been friendly for a few years. Yeah. But I feel like I've known you before I knew you as a friend. What's it like for you now that you really represent us? You represent where we're from so well, so all it, over the world. It's kind of strange. Wherever I go, obviously I'm a fish out of water, right? But wherever I go, I immediately make myself at home. Mm. So I think that that's very common of people who come from where we're from. That you know we're, we're we're unlike anybody else in the world, and yet wherever we go, if we're there for long enough, we'll make it just like home. Right. You know, food, food, Find family, booze. Home. The boar's yeah. head will always be found. The boar's heart. Yeah, yeah, you find you find a guy. <laughs> you know what I learned you about find myself? Him in Bay cities. Hey. This is what I learned about myself, and I think you're the same way from traveling. Like we, oh, I know how to find a guy, and any you go, I, I got to get a guy here. I'm in this city for more than a day. I need to get a guy. Where's yeah. The, I need a guy for the meat. I need a guy to do my suit. Whatever it is, you find, and it's a people thing. I got a, I got here. I got a go-to dry cleaner. Of course. I got a mechanic got a in in West Covina <laughs> for my Cadillacs. <laughs> <laughs> so I went. I had a. I had a. I was here. I was living in in Sherman Oaks actually. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, that's where uh, we are. Yeah, right, right off uh, Sepulveda, right, mm -hmm. right by the four hundred five. And I had a 1985 Eldorado convertible with the power trunk pull down. Of course, and, you the, did. and the power trunk pull down was was like was like having a seizure. It was going up and down, up and down, <laughs> up and down. So I said, "This isn't good." So I go to Casa de Cadillac on on Ventura Boulevard, thinking, you know, Casa de Cadillac. It's been there forever. Somebody there's got to know how to fix this problem. 
Mm-hmm. Not one person. Get out. They, they, no, I'm sure. So I call I call Patrick Moreno. He's one of the uh one of the security guys works for Mike Boschetti Security on uh, America's Got Talent. Uh Patrick's got like all like old school Volkswagens and like those little Toyota pickups, those crazy pickups they got out here. Yeah. With the with the bed that goes up and like spins around. Uh, hydraulics. So, right, right, yeah. So so I'm like, I need it, I need somebody who works on like old school cars who knows what they're doing. And he sends me to uh a a uh, body shop in Covina. And I go, I've never been to Covina before in my life. And if you guys are watching from elsewhere, Covina, California, uh, it's an old school neighborhood. It's a Mexican neighborhood, uh, Mexican American neighborhood. Map. I have no idea right. where it is. You have no idea where it is? No. East LA. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So well, now I know why I've never been there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I pull up, pull I pull up with this car and you could hear it. You could hear the, the motor going. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> I pull up and these guys come out, they're looking over my car. I tell them what's going on, and uh, I tell them who sent me, because that's what we do in New York. It's always, you know, always, always tell somebody like, you know, I sent you, so they know to take care of you like they would take care of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we're always, yep, we're always, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, we're always extending it. the relationship to our Correct. friends. We want our friends to be treated better than we are. Right. You know, I, I, so I go there, I tell them who I who I am, who sent me. They say, uh, okay. I said, how how soon can you get a part? He said. Uh, he goes, uh, I think I think we could we could help you out. Why don't you go in the back over there? My wife just came. She's about to start making lunch for everybody. His wife came with the I mean, it, amazing these green corn tamales with uh, with uh, like like um, uh, like tamales. like beef and and he got the Spanish and, in there, but the green corn, the the, the sweet oh, sweet tamales, mm-hmm. and and they were drinking Modelo and having tamales. And I was oh. hanging out. I was hanging out at this body shop. The guy goes out in the back, comes back in 15 minutes later with the part. I look back, there's a, a graveyard of old Cadillacs wow. in the back of this shop, right? Yeah. So we're hanging out. We're talking about cars. I'm, I'm telling them what I got. They're showing me pictures. We're talking about uh, this and that. And, and about, about a half an hour later, the guy comes in. He goes, all right, all right, it's done, right? I go, I, I go to say how much, and he said, no, 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 no. This, this one's with us, right? Uh, fast forward uh, about a year later. I'm back out here. This time I'm in Studio City. Mm-hmm. And I run into this, this guy uh, who's restoring, like a, like a, uh, I think it was a, a 58 Cadillac Eldorado Brome. For those car heads out there, this is a suicide door. Beautiful Very car. rare, rare, rare uh, mm. uh, Cadillac. It, it, matter of fact, it, this car was so bespoke, it had a, a five-piece decanter set. In the glove box. <laughs> Hell yeah. That you, the decanter set alone is worth like seven or eight grand. Traffic's so bad out here when you're in you traffic. They, back in the day, we should have a whiskey. We're waiting yeah. to sit in for a while. And, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's a carbureted car. I, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not 100% sure about the mechanics, whatever. You need like a, a, a carburetor rebuilt or something. Okay. And I, I send this guy to the shop, and I, I tell him to mention my name. And he calls me uh, a couple months later. He says, I finally reached out to that shop. He goes, uh, boy, boy, am I glad they did. When I walked in there, the first thing I saw was a picture of your car up on the wall. And I said, you know, places like this right. don't exist to the average person. Right. But for whatever reason, guys like us will find them. It, absolutely. And the people there will know that we're good people, that we come from, There's you know, warmth, we come right? from the same, we're cut from the same cloth. Yeah. I, I love hearing this, man, because I do have this big fear. First, two fears. Moving out here, where it feels like there's less, it's not the barometer for entry. If you're in the East Coast, if you're in New York, Long Island, most shops are going to be like that, right? Let's have dinner. Out here, you have to seek them out, right? But my big fear is that, is that dying? Like, is our kids' generation going to have dinner with the shop owner in the back with the I family? I don't think so. But we gotta keep it alive, right? That's what it it's is. It's gonna be a CVS. Well, here's the thing: if you want to, if <laughs> you, it's, be, it's gonna be a CVS. Uh, it terrible. is. Yeah. What, what's the what's the oh, most geez. what's the most popular uh, uh, form of payment these days? But contactless. Nobody wants to see their delivery driver anymore. Is, they want uh, them to leave it at the well, door I'm not and walk be away. Upset about that, actually. <laughs> Nobody wants to go grocery <laughs> shopping anymore. True, robot man. deliveries. We've been what happened to the milkman, Cos? What happened to the milkman? Women what need happened a, to the a temptation? Milkman. They need that, right. that old temptation. That's a real thing. What are these yeah. robot the milkman? Here's how we yeah. here's how we keep yeah, it popular. We do it on TikTok. 
TikTok. That's it. We got. If we put it on TikTok, they'll want to go see it. We need to somehow make That's old true. fashioned mom and pop and warmth like this trend on TikTok. I don't know how though. We got to figure this out. He's oh, it's guy. already trending, cuz. Yeah. It's already trending. Why? Sal, just his essence alone, he's posted he a couple it. videos over the past, uh, I'm going to say, week, and they've all done pretty well. One of them's approaching 200,000 views. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And that's, it's just because of who he is. Well, that's why I think, because your voice is one subject, right, we talk about, but it's your personality, your charisma, and the fact that you care. Because I, I relate to you as a person in show business as well. We care about the people we meet. want to have a good time. We want to celebrate life, right? La Vita Bella. Is it because we're Italian? Is it because where we're from? I try to figure that out. I don't know. I think it, it has to do with how we're raised. See, Greg's not Italian, no. but he gets it. Oh, sorry, man. It's been fun. Listen here, my crap. Greg's German Irish. Listen here, my crap, my friend. Listen, I'm actually a little Irish, so so you know. So we're cool. A little my yeah, I, my, yeah. I, my livers Most and my Italian exit. thing in me is the espresso we have. This there morning. we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny because everywhere I go, I always have a little bit of a crew. And my girls always like, "You're so fucking codependent." I'm like, "No, but that's where that, that's the way it is. That's the way to roll. That's the way to roll. I always codependence is not a word. That's what I said. I said I'm a Maybe I like maybe I like to share my experiences with people. Yeah. yeah. And I, not I, through the phone, but in person. Do you have you. a sister? Yeah. I do. You do. So you understand. Like I said, Melissa, said, my sister knows my fucking codes. She knows She knows how, how much I have in my checking account. Right. She's right. like, that's very codependent. Said, that's fucking Italian. I never yeah, knew yeah. anything different. Like that's... if I die, it goes to her and she figures out what to do with it. Right. Not but you. Now, get, no, not, 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 no, my, not sister, my sister lives with me. Oh, she, my sister go. lives next door to me. We have a duplex next to each other. My mother, said, my mother said, you don't have to live at home, but you have to live with your brother till you get married. That's yeah. great. That's <laughs> great. I'm like, thanks, mom. <laughs> my my fear, which we're touching on, because I do think you're like holding the flag. And, and in, me, in me, in my own way, I want to do the same thing. With the, my, I've got two kids now. I don't want them to grow up in a world where we don't have these places and these experiences. And it has to do with upbringing parents and what they grew up with, right? And right. I was taught this as well, but also it's a, a born thing too. Like you were born to go sing and share your, your personality with the world. And I think that like, we, we have to f harvest that in our kids and not kind of stunt that. And, and the sad part is like, are we afraid to be open with the world now? Like my, my daughter's like me. We go out in LA, we talk to everybody. I'm trying yeah. to do that with her. Yeah. But maybe that maybe that's what'll do it. I don't know what the answer is. Basically, that's, can you fix that's this? That's a big part. Yeah, Sal, can, can you, you do this? Can I fix I'm it? I'm asking yeah. you with this Sal, TikTok. Are you the man, Sal. <laughs> it's, it's you. I'm asking you. You. It's you. I don't know if I alone could fix it, but I could definitely. I definitely will never change. Right. This will never be be out of me. Right. You know, I I, I once I find a spot that I like, I go all the time. Same. And the prices might go up, but I'll still go because I know all the faces. Because I could ask a favor. Right. That's something that has to be taught. You make you build these relationships so that once in a while, when you when you have to call a favor upon somebody, you can. Uh, I go to the same dry cleaner all the time, and every Christmas, I I make sure I, I slip the guy who who writes my tickets, you know, a, a couple extra dollars. I say, Merry Christmas. This is for you. Because how many times uh, they 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 do same day service cuts off at nine thirty. <laughs> but how many times is there traffic on the Seafood Oyster Bay Expressway? I get there nine thirty five, nine forty five. Still does it for you, right? Still does it for me. My yeah. biggest pet peeve is because he people, sees me every yes, day. Yes, when people don't have like a common decency thing that I feel like is old school. Like if someone be like, nope, it's it's nine thirty five. I can't do it, and I'm being warm and friendly. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest pet peeve in life now as an adult. It's not that kind of old fashioned like I shake your hand, you shake mine. We're friends. You bring business. That is if you. It's being lost. Like people kind of like, no, we can't do that anymore. It, this it, is the rules. It, it's it's also the difference between, you know, you being a common face. You know, you could either be a face in the crowd or you can be somebody that, that somebody remembers you because you try to talk to them. Right. Because you, know, you try to spark up a conversation. You know, can you, can you, know you know picture that? a world with a contactless boost at a wedding? Contactless <laughs> boost. What's, you know, what's your cell? Show me boost. your Venmo. Does the yeah, boost yeah. have yeah. Apple Pay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scan this code. There's a QR code at the, at the beam. <laughs> when we went to Bay City, they asked me for, for cash. They're like, cash only. I was like, what? That's kind of. It's I was actually really yeah. surprised, and, and of course, Italians own it. I like giving yeah, business course. to I a place. I want to give business to a place where I know they are doing sketchy things with their taxes. Like I like <laughs> knowing. <laughs> Big little spot near what's my house. Going, cash yeah. What's yeah, going on it. here? And I want to know something's sketchy here. I want you know to make why? More. You know why, Paul? 
because they told us, they told our, our grandparents and our great grandparents that the streets in America were paved with gold. Right. And it was, it was full of shit. And they they weren't paved here. at all. Right. As a matter of fact, when they got here, they wanted us to pave them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The drug, we did the, the labor Italians. back then. That's so right. if we take a little back under the, ma the Madarats, on, so we call it the Madarats. Yeah, Madarats, of course. Madarats, yeah. of course. That's the, what the, the fund I of the Madarats. I have money under my fucking mattress. Uh, my Nona. Yeah, God, God rest her soul. My Nona was the closest to my Nona. She had envelopes of cash when she died. We were digging her house for months. We yeah, we, so much we were money. pulling yeah. coffee cans out of the attic. <laughs> Everywhere, yeah. At, with cash. Right, in the ceiling. I, she gave me the money. I, everybody. It was amazing. I, I, I thought my, uh, who, who's the guy from uh, F uh, Frank Ocean from Ocean's Eleven? Or who's the guy? Yeah. Uh, Clooney? The, no, the main guy. What's his, what's his character's name? Frank oh, Ocean. Oh, oh, uh, oh, Danny Ocean. Danny Ocean. Yeah, yeah. My grandmother was like Danny Ocean. She had cash <laughs> stuffed away in Listen, different different spots. These, these, kids, these, kids, these kids these days, crypto, you invest it. No, no, no. I'm oh my God. in my backyard. Imagine you're one of those people right now. Now. Ooh, so, yeah, F that. Painful. Tony Soprano, 10 grand in the bird feed in the backyard. That's the way to go. <laughs> and you know what that 10 grand go. is going to be tomorrow? Exactly. 10 grand. Yeah, you right. know what it's going to be a week from now? 10, 10 grand. grand. Yeah, right. That's right. Exactly. I actually so, yeah. have money in my cigar box I think, uh, underneath all the cigars. I feel Why like not? that's not a good Now everybody idea. knows. It's great news. No, nah, that's all right. They, I, I hope they come actually, over. Actually, <laughs> where, where is the cigar This guy's box? ready. He stuck this guy's ready. This guy's ready. I got everyone your address. We'll have everybody come out and say, come visit him. He needs, he's codependent. He wants to He wants to practice. Oh, really? his new shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you a quick story about Frank Sinatra because it made me think about this era, right? I don't know if you know this story, but there's a restaurant in New York City. I used to go all the time because he used to always go. I'm blanking on the name now. Patsy's? PJ yes, Clark. Patsy's. Patsy's. Oh, okay. Not Patsy's. Patsy's the chain. Patsy's the, the restaurant. 56th Street. So you know Patsy's, it, right? Yeah. Do you know the story? Oh, I know all the stories. I'm sure you know this one then about Frank where he used to always go there. when he was. Frank Sinatra was the first teen idol. You know this in pop yeah. culture. He was the first music pop star, the first Justin Bieber of our culture, right? So he goes, he's getting hot. He went through a lull, as you know. I'm sure you idolized the guy. He went through a lull in his career where he kind of lost that essence of his pop stardom for a couple of years. He was down on his luck. He went to Patsy's and he was like, I've nowhere, he told the owner, I have nowhere to go on Thanksgiving this year. You know, no one cares. I'm not doing this thing or I don't know what I'm going to do for Thanksgiving. Wow. Do you know the story? I, I don't heard know this, this from one. That. No. So he goes, I don't know, you know, I, my family's not doing this. Like, we don't have anything going on. You know, no one cares about me anymore. I was this big thing, and I'm walking the streets of New York. Nobody recognizes me. Down, just depressed about his career kind of going like this at the time. This was before he came back. The owner goes, just come here. Come here for Thanksgiving. Frank Snow's like, really, really? He goes, Thanksgiving. The whole staff's there. They love him. He's a regular, like we're talking about. Years later, he found out they weren't open. The owner opened for him. Had the whole staff there for him. Made sure he had a Thanksgiving meal that was just like his favorite restaurant. And once he went back up, he, you know, that was the most famous restaurant of his. He recommended everybody his whole life. So well, he kept going back. His, his, everybody. So Frank Sinatra, Pat, Patsy Pasquale. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if you've been there lately. This guy named Sal is the, is the owner now. Patsy Pat, Pasquale's you bought it? son. <laughs> no, Pasquale's son. Okay. It's still in the family. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the stories he tells about how... His, Frank Sinatra truly loved his father, mm -hmm. and you hear this when when we when we meet someone who's good to us, we love them with all our hearts. We remember them. Things aren't forgotten, mm. you know. And Frank was one of these guys who was still very old school, you know. Even though his his ideas were progressive, I mean, at the time, you know. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, nobody nobody put their career on the line for African American artists. Yeah. Right. But, they, but here was Frank Sinatra, and here here was uh, Marilyn Monroe doing it with with Ella Fitzgerald at Copacabana, uh, and yet the guy to have such old school values like that, and to treat to treat uh, Pasquale like an equal. Right. You know, no matter what. My father always said you treat the, the janitor with the same respect I, as you treat the CEO. You live the same way. The yeah. same people you see on the way up are going to be the people who greet you on the way down. We just were talking you know, about this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly yeah. this yeah. point. So, so uh, uh, Frank was always good to Pasquale and, and vice versa. Right. I think it's 1977. The Yankees and the Dodgers are in the World Series. It's, it's uh, the last game. They're in New York. Uh, the Yankees beat the Dodgers. Right now, Frank. If anybody knows Frank, you know he's a Dodgers fan, right? A huge Dodgers yeah, fan. Yeah. So he was at the game naturally. After the game, Billy Martin tells tells the you know the whole uh, Yankees organization, "Listen, I'm taking you guys out to dinner. We're gonna go to we're gonna go to Frank Sinatra's favorite restaurant. This place called Patsy's, right? So they go to Patsy's, 
And he tells Pasquale, listen, I want the room upstairs because it's the Yankees. They just won the World Series. Mm-hmm. They're not going to sit with the common folk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and Pasquale goes, no, 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 listen, I can't have you upstairs. We got a private party up there tonight. And, and Billy Martin goes, Pasquale, we're the New York Yankees. Yeah. We just won the World Series. <laughs> You're going to put us in the, in the uh, downstairs? You got to understand, it's a very, very special, very special uh, uh, guest mm-hmm. tonight. We can't have you. So uh, uh, Billy Martin decides he's going to hang out at the bar upstairs until you know this so-and-so walks in and then say, listen, pal, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you know, but uh, the Yankees just won the World Series. Right. Uh, we'd like <clears throat> to sit up here. So... Billy Martin's standing by the bar. All of a sudden, Pat, Pat comes up, closes the curtains, right? And now there's a back end, there's a back entrance, there's a side entrance. Uh, you've been to Patsy, so yep. just, just to the right of the window, there's a door and there's a, there's a stairwell that goes up to yes. the second story yes, yes, so yes, that yes. the second floor kitchen can receive deliveries right off the street. Mm. So they close the curtains, right? Billy Martin busts through the curtains, opens the door, and comes face to face with Frank Sinatra. Wow. Right? Frank looks at him, he goes, Billy, <laughs> steps aside and goes and sits down. Billy Martin is like stuttering. He can't even, he can't even form words. He just saw Frank Sinatra. Wow. Right? Uh, uh, and at this point, 1977, 78, Frank Sinatra's a, a global superstar. Yeah. He had already came back after this lull in his career right. with reprise, with my way. Right. You know, uh, had already come back with all this. And now he's he's back touring with the with the Royal Philharmonic. Right. And 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 you know, all over the world. Crazy. And and Pat Pasquale goes, Billy, get the hell out of here. Right. So Billy pushes him out the curtain. He goes and Billy goes to Pat. Oh, miss, listen, I I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was Frank Sinatra, but but listen, you you gotta get me to meet him. And Pasquale, like, ah, oh, no, I don't know, Billy, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's not like that. He's a very private guy. You know, the, the, this man's very good to me. Uh, and, and besides, he's a Dodgers fan. <laughs> 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 and Billy goes, come on, come on. I won't, I won't mention nothing about the win. I won't, I won't talk nothing about the game. So Pasquale goes, all right. All right, Billy, you and only you can go back. He goes, great, that's great news. So Pasquale turns around to go ask Frank Sinatra. Billy Martin stands up on the table to the entire New York Yankees team, goes, hey, everybody, let's meet Sinatra. Wow. <laughs> Single file. He's signing baseball, oh Sinatra, taking, you know, uh, uh, wow. uh, signing napkins, right? Talking to these guys about how much their mother loves this song and that song, <laughs> right? Uh, 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 finally, he gets to the last guy, right? Says, thank you, good night. Pasqua comes up. He goes, Frank, I am so, so sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen, right? Frank goes, don't worry. Don't worry, Pat. Don't worry. Don't worry. He goes, uh, 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 he goes I know how to make myself feel like a winner yet, right? He leaves him. Billy Martin at the end of the night goes to pay the bill. Pasqua goes, there's no bill. Wow. Mr. Sinatra took care of it. For the whole Yankee team? For the whole wow. New York Yankee team. Take a look. Team. I got Frank on the on the screen here. This is him. This is an article, of course, from a Long Island, Long Island Weekly talking about him. Take, you can take four again, Greg. Yeah. I just wanted to see a picture of him while we're talking about This is how you can tell God phone. has a sense of humor. Look at that bowl of pasta he's eating. And look how skinny Frank Sinatra Yeah, right? Yeah, What's I that know, about? Yeah. What was you that, know, keto? So- so, my, so, so you know, uh, Jimmy Kimball, his his uh, uncle used to be Frank Sinatra's bodyguard whenever he came out in New York. And I remember he, he, hearing him say to Jimmy Kimball, he says, "Be like Frank. Frank tipped everybody really good. Don't right. be cheap with your money." And this is like when he first started. And Jimmy used to be known very. He's very well known as a. We good were just tipper. talking about that. Yeah, I yeah, juice everybody. I, I, I grease everyone. Throw a dash guy. I throw him a twenty. It depends on how I'm feeling that night. Right. But every once in a while, I throw the guy a twenty, and I know he's like. You know, it's 20 bucks, right? Like, that guy's probably like, holy shit. I man, met Sal at the nice. front. He gave me a 20. He was like, hey, thanks for having us. <laughs> <laughs> I said 20 and then maybe more at the end. We'll see how Yeah, I mean, he, he, put, he put my car right in front. Yeah, I thought I was somebody, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, valid I, for you. Uh, last night, we go to, um, we're driving around, and I said, listen, we were passing the Beverly Hills Hotel. I said, let's go to the Polo Lounge and see who's who, see who, who's there to see. Yeah. We get there ten forty five. It's lit. I I tip the guy twenty dollars the valet. I said, please keep it up front. I don't want to wait. I for love that. Come out. Keep it up front. Keep it That's up my front. Favorite. We go inside. It's ten forty five. I said, listen, we already we already made last call. So I said, all right. So we 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 you know we go to the bathroom. We come out. Uh, the guy goes, oh, what happened? Ah, uh, it's it's uh, last call, right? The guy brings a car up. He goes to hand me my twenty dollar bill back, and I said, mm. no, 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 that's for you. 
Yeah. Right. We get in the car and I turn to them and I go, can you imagine <laughs> the people yeah. that come through here that this guy's giving me my right. get back to me? Yeah. Right. He's like, I'm good. I'm good for the night. That's I it. parked at the Hard Rock in, in, in Hollywood, in Florida, right? The, the Hard Rock. Oh, the other me. Hollywood. Tip yeah. the guy, tip the kid $20, $40 to keep the car up front. You walk out, your car's missing. Where is it? Oh, they brought it downstairs. Give me my 40 bucks right, back. What I, what? Oh, yeah. I went to Craig's in the El Dorado. And I, I pull <laughs> up, and they're taking pictures. They don't even know who the hell I am. They're just taking pictures of the car. Mm, right? Nice. It's a, That's it's a, nice. It's an El Dorado the more famous with the than you. with the with the uh, with the white the the Vogue tires and the spoke rims and everything. The nice pinstripe. I got the block rocker going. When you open the doors, I had the custom plexiglass done that lights up. It says, "How you doing?" When you open the doors, <laughs> right? The best. And yeah, and yeah. and they they just put it in front. I didn't even tip the guy. He goes, oh, "I'm gonna keep it right here for you." They had a McLaren P1. They had the G wagon. I don't understand the G wagon. I get people like I don't it. like I don't, him. I, don't I got get a Jeep. fucking hate him. I, I got the I got a real Jeep. 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 Right, a Jeep. Yeah. yeah, it's right. You're in That's America. Real, you should yeah. be driving the car that won the war, not the one that <laughs> lost it. <laughs> <laughs> so right, it's true. You ever go to the Mercedes Museum? There's a funny twelve year gap in the history there. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it matters to be warm to people. Like, like I don't know if it happens. This is a status kind of who's who thing, and you do stick out. Where you go, hey, you doing? What's up? Talk to like again. Treat everyone the same. CEO, the, the bellman, it doesn't really matter. Simon Cowell comes up to me at the rap of the show, rap of America's Got Talent, seven years ago now. Comes up to me, uh, six years ago, I should say. Comes up to me and he goes, um, Sal, don't ever change. Mm. And I look him right back in the eye and say, got me this far. <laughs> <laughs> True. You know? L like, let me well, ask you. I don't think you could change if you tried. Yeah. You could spend your entire life being somebody you're not, pretending to be something that you think is a better version of you, right? But people are smart. People can smell bullshit from across right. the street. Mm -hmm. And by the time they figure you out, you've wasted an entire lifetime being full of shit. <laughs> how, does, how does that feel? When you get to that point where you realize that you, you put on this whole persona, you didn't fool nobody. No. Can we can we just get a cheers on that? I'm, I cannot wait to add inspirational music to what you just said <laughs> and make that. Wait, you were gonna put that on your, his TikTok and mine. That was a, that was amazing, Sal. That was amazing. You're right. You're right, man. You're right. And I don't I'm chugging this wine. And I don't and I don't know everything. I don't know everything, but I know that. Oh. No, but listen, I was, this, is, this is why we're friends, though, and this is what I'm attracted to. I do think, like, as we, I think for your man. age and your career, twenty percent. You're, you're ahead. Of, you're ahead of the curve, though, on where you're at with your life and career, because we do spend so much time like trying to live in an adult's world, trying to put on a facade, right? I've learned similarly. I think fatherhood helped us for me too. Like, who cares? Life is short. Live your life. Be you. Have fun. Well, that being and, and said, be authentic. If they don't like Nobody you for you, cares. they're not gonna like you. Yeah, exactly. And people won't like you. We live in the culture now. It's like, oh, you're not gonna be liked. Let's everyone should like me. No. No, I don't care. Don't you want to find somebody though that you're not completely. Annoyed by? Sure. Yeah, spend your life with someone oh, that makes you better. A little too late for me. Well, wait. <laughs> Speaking of, you're engaged, right? I am. How's that going? Congrats. It's, it's great. You planning a wedding? We are. It's uh, expensive I'm as sorry. hell. I, sh are you saying yes is what I'm asking? What? The, Just to everything. Yes. <laughs> well, so, so yes. He, here's... The, right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. well, here's the thing about an Italian wedding. You know, mm. if you're going to pay for it yourself, it is a nightmare. Mm. Because you, have, you start out with a guest list that's... Like longer than the guest list to the White House correspondence dinner. Oh, like receipt. it's, it's yeah. like six hundred people. Knowing you, like it's the cleaner. You're Third cousins, before, fourth yeah. cousins. It's the guy in Covino. Everybody, everybody's the body body shop no, guy. The, especially my you. nephew. My, the, my Kathy from the dry cleaner. Yes, of oh, course, especially with you, everybody gets pissed if you don't invite them. Right? People looking at you funny. We had an engagement party. My parents threw the engagement nice. party. Didn't invite nice. me. My parents threw the engagement party, so they decided where it was going to be, and they picked a place that had a had a capacity. So they had to cut it off at a hundred people. Oh. I had Gianna posted a picture. She was in like a like an off white lace dress, and everybody thought we got married. And people started texting me. Oh boy! Oh, congratulations! Oh, uh, my invite must have gotten lost. <laughs> wow! I'm like, so you know, now I really don't want to invite you to my wedding. Yeah. The good thing though about the engagement party is like you invite some people that don't show up, and they send a gift, and it's like you're like, hmm, good thing, good thing. I didn't invite them to the wedding because if they think this is what a wedding costs, 
If right. this is the boost, then you know, I don't. You yeah, know. that's the thing. I, when we were doing, we were looking some at our people, wedding, some people bring a hundred. Some people yeah, bring a hundred dollars a person. We're showing everybody your fiance. Congrats, man! Beautiful. Look at this Thank shot. You. Look at that. Yeah, you're, that. Definitely, you're definitely dating up, bro. She really is. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know. Out my coverage. <laughs> Gianna <laughs> Chiara Oliva, you. nice Irish girl. She's Irish, all Irish. Good for you. No. Oh. Yeah, Gianna Gianna Chiara Oliva was born on Thanksgiving to a Joseph and a Mary. There it is. Yeah, so that's how oh, you man. can tell She's this wedding's going to be She's expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to have, you are going to, I want to give you a tip, and you probably know this already. Get yeah. ready for lifelong grudges from whoever you cut off the list because you got to cut somebody. You're going to have to Somebody's cut Somebody's got to get cut. Someone's going to get cut and then you're going to hear about it for a few years. Isn't Paul, it? like, I was even thinking like maybe I'll just go get married on an island somewhere. By the way, this is so far my the most Italian episode we've ever had. I just keep eating prosciutto and drinking wine as we chat. Did you try the mort? I got the mortadella with the pistachios. Oh, so prosciutto. Six different so types of cheeses. Bread. Hold on, hold on. So when you, got, when, you, when you got on a knee, did you get on a knee? I got on a knee. You got on God a knee. Bless. You, you got it. You feel it like, because you seem like a very sensitive type of guy. You I am. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you tear a little Is bit. A I had realized very quickly that this was the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. And once you realize that, you realize, oh my God, how am I going to raise a bunch of kids? You know, without being around. You know, like like uh, you work here. I mean, you, granted, you you do some remote stuff. You fly to New York, whatever. Sure. But even when you guys travel, you travel as a family. Yeah, pretty yeah. often. Me, I'm going to be the one who's constantly on the road. And so, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. I'm going to need to be around, around my family. So we decided we're going to move back to New York. That's where we're going to put roots mm -hmm. down. It was nice. our first Christmas Eve, our first time hosting. And we had everybody. We had my family. We had her family. Everybody was over the house. We had 40 people over the house. Beautiful. Jeez. I, it comes, I, I mean, I'm so stressed out. I'm making sure the food's going at the right time, the appetizers, the main dish, the seven fish, right? Of course, we're doing that, yeah. All, all, all that. Finally, we get to the toast. I am so, I've never been more nervous in my life for something, right? And, and I auditioned yeah, for America's Got, got Talent, talent yeah. in front of Heidi Klum. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I've never been more nervous in my life because you only do this once. You know, you only ask the love of your life to marry you once. Mm -hmm. It's nerve-wracking. And, and so I did a 12-minute speech completely blacked out i don't remember it i can't i can't tell you what i said oh you cried 100 it worked i yeah. Yeah. i was like I, I kept getting choked up and like here's gianna standing next to me like looking at me like what what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with this <laughs> talk, like just just make the toast so we can fucking have dessert like right, what, right, right. You know, what's, so in it. what's the matter with you yeah so i i i i finally say you know uh uh toast to my family my parents, you know, for making all this possible, uh, and the future Mrs. Valentinetti. And I hadn't asked her to marry me yet. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then I said, I had to ask her first, and I pulled the ring out of my pocket, and nice. I turned around, I get down on one knee, and, and, wow. I, and I asked her to, to marry me. Amazing. Yeah. That's exactly how it was supposed to go. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah. It's amazing, man. Congrats. Thank wow. you. I, I, I do so much traveling. Uh, and and I'm, I'm on the road so much mm. that it's nice to be with somebody who always makes you feel like you're home, uh, no matter where you're God. at. I remember I remember that before the kid came. That was, so <laughs> <laughs> that was so, you're making me. I'm gonna cry now. This is good like, for both of us I, to hear right now. Yeah, we need yeah, to hear yeah, this yeah, in yeah. our marriages. I see. I my my fiance is the uh, uh, only child of uh, of. Uh, unfortunately, my my would be father will passed away. My future father will passed away. Mm. So she's the only child of a widow. So when our kid comes, that kid is the only thing in my mother-in-law's life. Wow. So Spoiled like you've never seen. Spoiled. I don't think we're ever going to have to worry about a date night right. or like, you know, or anything like that. That's, you know, uh, so I think I think we'll, we'll be all right in that sense. I, you, you can't predict the future. Sure. You know, but that's what I think. I, I also, one of the reasons why I... I, you know, you decide that you want to marry somebody is because you're, you're looking for more than just the love of your life, your best friend. You're looking for the mother of your children. You know, you think like, who, who's going to be uh, uh, loving? Who's going who's gonna to give them the same warmth and the same uh, 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 compassion sure. and everything, you know, you got as a child? And that's Gianna to a T, you know? Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure, sure, you, you, sure. You know how it is. Well, it's they, wild when that you they go from girlfriend to that feeling. 
Well, like, you know, it wanna, also is one of those procreate. things, too. Like, I was talking to somebody, and they're like, because you guys have so much love for each other when the kid comes. Now, all of a sudden, that love gets lessened a little bit because you're giving so much to the kid. So it's a whole different dynamic, like he says, what happens when you're with, you know, you have that kid now. Now, you know, I mean, you, get, you have a lot of love, but then all of a sudden, you find somebody you love more than her. You it's, will. It's your kid. Yeah, As absolutely. they get older, and all of a sudden, they're like, Papa, you know, you're like, what? What do you? Whatever you want. When you I, have I, a kid, that kid is 50% part you. part of you. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we so hope. They're yeah. A we piece hope. of you, <laughs> we hope. A piece of you is is walking around on this earth. It's crazy. You know? I'm excited for you guys, man, especially to get to that chapter as well, I'm sure. How are you guys such great parents? You're so freaking busy, the two of you. Thank you. I think, it, like you said earlier, you, And you can tell when you see Carmela how happy she is sure. and how, how, like... Oh my God! Watching her, watch you, you and you and her sitting and watching your wife crazy, on television. Crazy. Well, that's gonna happen to you. That was like that. That yeah. was like such an emotional yeah. thing to see. You know what it is, man? It's 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 being present for the time as with family. You know, like I I, I eventually might be on the road. Christina might tour, but when you're with your family, you have the time as a family. And we're 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 kids. Like play, have fun. Like I'm so far the other way. Like if my daughter was if we're at a restaurant, she was like, let's go on the table. Like let's, I would just jump on the table there. I don't care at all. And I think you have to follow the fun of that with your kids, and that's how we are as parents. Like when we're well, having fun, we're having fun. Well, what's know? good too is like we, you get to be a kid again. Like you know, like oh, we're gonna go see the lights. So we, you know, we we it's the we best get the tickets. So the we're best. Gonna, we're going to see the lights at the zoo. We go to the zoo together. Like you do shit that you used to, you know, you wouldn't do if you didn't have a kid. Now right. don't get me wrong, I'm a lot older. I didn't have a kid till I was later in life. But it's fun to be like, hey, Paul, we have a text thing. We're going to do this. We're going to do that for holidays. We're going to do this. You don't know how excited it is, it, how exciting it is to go to Disney like with, with children. It's the best. Yeah. It's the best. We've, because it, it's, we've gone. You're like reliving it. You know, yeah. it's, 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 it's having the experience all over again. Yeah, That's Disney. what parenthood is, though, is you start seeing life through the lens of a child. And for some reason, it, it's kind of what we were talking about earlier. As we get older, we think we're supposed to lose that. Like, I'm immature, and I'm never going to change very also. Immature, very, yeah. very immature. Very immature. Not me too. Not me. And once you're a dad, you're going to see it's just you just get to be that more. I'm really excited for that step. The best. You know, we're I, documenting I, I, now you talking about this because I know yeah, you're going to be a yeah, great dad. Yeah, yeah. And when, when it happens. No, watch. Gonna... Watch. I come back in a few years. I'll be bald. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, no, yeah. Once, <laughs> once you have a baby, it's Everything's going, ruined. man. It's going. That's trust it, me. Trust me. <laughs> this is. I did TV Your earlier today. This is painted on. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> once I procreated, the peacock started to get thin. Okay, The peacocking started to fade. I found my mate. It's over. It's going away. It's good. Yeah, trust me. Trust me. Were you with your fiance before America's Got Talent? No. Okay. After. She met her after. So yeah. She's she's looking for fame. I'm, just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's okay. You want to hear, right. hear the story? Her father was uh, watching America's Got Talent, uh, and it's my episode, and he's looking at it, and he sees me, and he pauses the TV, and John was with somebody at the time, you know, some manja cake. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Trevor, or, I don't know, something like that. Oh, white Trevor boy. Williams, Chad, Chad, Chad. and uh, Chad, her father yeah. calls her in the room and says, "Because her father hated this guy." <laughs> <laughs> her father called. Her, fa her father was like an old school knock around guy from Corona Queens. Nice, Joey Bubbles. If anybody knows of him, of course. What's his, up, Joey? His mural is on the side of the Parkside Restaurant in Corona. Wow, it's his face. So, uh, uh, calls her in the room and says, "You see this guy." See, this guy, he loves his mother. He <laughs> loves his grandmother. This guy you can marry. Mm, wow. This is 2016. Uh, fast forward uh, 18 months later. Uh, it's uh, December 2017. And um, I'm out with, uh, with my cousin. He had just picked me up from the airport. I really didn't want to go out. I was dressed like this. Black jacket, black shirt, black jeans, white sneakers. Right? I look, I look like... Um, Somewhere between like a hitman and an old man, right? <laughs> like, you know, and so uh, uh, we get we get to Farmingdale to the bars. He gets out and he puts a Santa coat on and a Santa hat. I go, it was it was December sixteenth, two thousand seventeen. He goes, uh, you 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 don't mind coming with us to SantaCon, right? I said, you didn't tell me this was SantaCon. It's like amateur night. It's like going out on St. Patrick's Day, right? right. I'm gonna get crap spilled on my shoes. We're gonna start a fight. I'm gonna be in the paper tomorrow, and yeah. it's not gonna be for good reason, <laughs> right? He goes, "Come on, come on, just just let loose, have a good night, All right?" So we go, um, and and we go up to meet uh, uh, with with some friends at the uh, the Nutty Irishman in Farmingdale, 
And I walk in, and it's just it's just drunken Santa Claus, is wall to wall, <laughs> elves and reindeer, and <laughs> <laughs> that's a good Not point. He actually is... loves that place. Yeah, no, I met. I met. Oh yeah, that's my. I met. Lives in the Naughty Irish. I met Greg at the Viking convention. <laughs> Cha. Uh, so Viking quest on the entourage. <laughs> I'm sta- I'm standing in the back of this bar, and I'm I really I want to leave. I'm so I'm so fed up with it, and out from the bathroom comes this uh, this little five foot Sicilian elf with a mouth on her. I mean she's just going off. I don't know what it was. She was just yelling and she's got this she sounds like she sounds like Marissa Tomei in, in my in cousin Danny. Right? And uh, I look at her and you know she's uh, very beautiful, beautiful girl. I mean stunning. Uh, 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 you know and uh, she comes up to me, she looks at me, she goes Aren't you the guy from that TV show? <laughs> and I'm like, well, <laughs> well, yes, I am. <laughs> and she goes, oh, I don't really care. But my father says I should marry you. Wow. And I said, well, I got to take you to dinner first if I'm going to marry you. I said, why don't, why don't we set something up one day? Uh, so so we afterwards, we, we exchanged phone numbers. We, we set something up. And... Uh, I'm I'm going to my house to get ready uh, to go. I'm on my way. I'm in the back seat of my car, and um, uh, I get a text from her friend, and she goes, uh, "Listen, Sal, we're gonna have to cancel tonight. Uh, Gianna's father passed away." Oh my god! And I was I thought it, I thought like they gotta be. This has got to be bullshit, you know. Like, <laughs> oh my what, god. Do, like, what do you mean? The first That's the day, worst and, fucking cop out I've ever heard. Right? Yeah. And as we're passing her house, because her house was on the opposite side of the, the I live on the Seaford Oyster Bay Expressway. Her house on the other side. It's like a ghetto Romeo and Juliet, right? <laughs> and uh, who's on the ghetto side? <laughs> no, no, just uh, me, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, so we go, uh, and you see the ambulances outside a house and everything. Oh, and, and no. I was like, oh my oh, god, geez. I feel, I feel terrible. So I get home and I go on Facebook. It turns out I knew this guy. It turns oh. out a lot of my friends knew this guy. Wow! It t- it turns out, like I see I see she posts a picture and I see a, fr- a friend of mine Alperna posts a picture. Wow! And I'm like, wait a second, it was a couple of years ago. I was hanging out with this kid who was dating Alperna's Getting niece, chills. and we we go to this little cigar lounge in Corona, and sitting in the back corner of the cigar lounge is this big heavy set guy with a tracksuit on and his hands folded over his belly and a big cigar in his mouth and sunglasses, uh, Carreras. And and Al Perna introduces me to him as his friend Joe, and he's a real quiet guy. And I never forgot I, I never forgot him. And when I see this picture, I'm like, oh my God, that's that's her father. I met this guy before. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Small world. It, you, you want to talk about a small world. And I I had sent them Lemon Ice King from from Corona because mm-hmm. she told me that her father used to hang out at Spaghetti Park, which is in between Lemon Ice King and the Park Side. For those of you who don't know, if you've ever seen the King of Queens in the opening sequence, he he's uh, he's got a lemon ice and it falls on the ground. Nice. Uh, uh, Doug and Carrie are standing outside. That's the Lemon Ice King of Corona. Oh wow! So I I went and I I got her something as a gesture. Said you know like I, I remember you said that you and your father really enjoyed this, and she called me, and she said you know I I I, I really appreciate that you know that was that was so thoughtful. And I said, you know, she had such a smile on her. Hmm. I said, I, I, I would really hate to see that go away. The world needs more of that. Hmm. Um, fast forward past the funeral, it's, uh, it's Christmas. And I'm texting back and forth with her. You know, I, I, I hope, you know, your holiday's going as well as it could be. You know, I'm, I'm so sorry and everything. This is this has got to be rough. I can't imagine mm. what this feels like for you. And it was after my family had been started packing it in. She goes, well, "Why don't you, why don't you come hang out? Because none of my friends can come hang out with me, and I just don't, I don't want to be alone." Mm. I go over there. We're sitting. We're we're having some wine, and all of a sudden she instructs Alexa uh, to play "Smoke Gets in Your Eyes" by The Platters. And that song plays through. And then she requests My Eyes Adored You by Frankie Valli. The best. And that plays through. And, and I'm thinking like, wow, you have really great taste in music, mm-hmm. right? 
uh, uh, she's beautiful. She has great taste in music. Uh, she's she's uh, she's like Marissa Tomei and 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 Snooki all rolled into one. I think this is like a <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is, this is a before. this is a dream in a place like uh, like like uh, Goomba Paradise, like Long Island, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, the next few months, uh, I was living in Florida. We were going back and forth, uh, and then. You know, in the last couple of years, especially during during COVID, we spent a lot of time together. Uh, I sure. decided that I had to I had to do something about not being able to perform in New York. Right. You know, and feeling like half a man, like I can't get out and, and play with a band. Right. So I moved to Miami. I said, "Do you want to come with me?" And she said, "Sure." And even even in the times where things were okay enough for me to take care of everything in you know, the pandemic, as a working musician, it can get pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, she was always supportive of me. She was always behind me 100%. You know, whether, whether it was, uh, you know, uh, Carbone in South Beach or Ramen in the apartment, she was happy. And I was happy. You the know, best. Wow. no matter what, no, you could be with this person wherever in any sort of situation and be happy. I, I don't know how much you believe in fate or destiny. I feel this way about my wife in a sense, too, about things line up. The fact that the dad saw you on TV. And knew like you were good for his daughter, and you had met him before her is crazy. I've never heard of that. You met I, him before her. I had met him before her. That's I met wild. him before America's Got Talent. So you so because that's why I asked because you you've obviously gone on to have this big awesome career, and I was wondering if you knew. He her didn't even before. remember me. He didn't recognize me. He, he just saw, saw me on TV, TV and didn't re didn't realize that he had met me. Yeah, that's but he crazy. knew he was a Long well, Island guy. Right. He knew how to sing. He, you know, I love his. But mother, testament to you, bit. testament to you with people, you it's remember the cool. guy and you remember. I and it. I feel like he's a part of your relationship in a really beautiful way. So good for you guys. That's I have awesome. never missed someone more that I haven't met than right. my than my father in law. Wow. You know, through all the stories, and then you have people who are friends of his, who were friends of his growing up, who are fans of mine, will come to the show and be like. I knew Joe. Wow. You know, I knew Joe. I've never. You know, I had a. I had a Joe in my life. My uncle Joe got me to audition for America's Got Talent. Got me to do, audition for American Idol, which which led into America's Got Talent. And he passed away before American Idol even aired. Oh, he never no got shit. to see any of it. Yeah. But I I I had my guardian angel Joe. Yeah. And you meet you meet this this girl years later, who has a father, and you think like, wow, this guy. And my mentor would have been like the best of friends. Sure, sure. You know, you meet more people who, who are like us. And like I said, I've never missed somebody more that I haven't met. Wow. I've never, uh, through, through all the stories, through all the different things he used to say, like, like um, uh, uh, he, he, he was a big guy. He would, instead of asking if anybody wanted to order dessert, because it's, you know, uh, it's not something the uh, the heavy guy at the table suggests. <laughs> no, he he would look around it. the table and say, "So, anybody in the mood for Desi Arnaz?" <laughs> 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 and I'm like, "It's yeah. the dumbest thing ever," but I love the that. Best. Yeah. I love that. And, and we'll be we'll be sitting at dinner, John and I. I'll be like, "Desi yeah, Arnaz." Yeah. I'll go, That's "Babalu." Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all, all of these interesting things this guy he was did. Charmed. Right when I'm about to be a part of her life, he goes away. You That's know, wild. And, and it, it leaves you to think like, you know, how do you not see that this is a sign that God puts you in this position to be this person's caretaker, to be this person's guardian, mm -hmm. you know, on, on earth for, for this guy who was so prolific. And, you know, you, you, you kind of believe it. Yeah, it's a fateful timing. And also, he had a hand in you two by literally saying, "Hey, this is this guy, you should marry this guy." How do I how do I thank you describe that? How do I thank this guy? Uh, who, by being who a great husband. Who gave me you Name a kid after. Be a great husband. <laughs> well, uh, besides that, but how do I thank this guy who who gave me uh one of the single most important who brought me one of the single most important people in my life? Yeah. yeah. 
How do I? How do I? How do I thank this guy and honor this guy? Well, it sounds like you are. You're living like him. You're taking I care of his I girl. Mean, I, I, and 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 like I said, I, I love him without even knowing him. That's amazing, man. Wow. Well, I, well, I'll say this. Fa fast forward uh, four and a half years. We're engaged. Look at that. I, I can't wait to see your wedding video and know that he's, I'm sure he'll be looking down, man. That's beautiful. I'm sure I got to invite yeah. you now because we broke bread. Yeah. Well, we broke I bread. Was say, and I, I was just I, thinking that myself. Am I going to get invited? I <laughs> want you to cancel a couple family members for Rico and I to get on the wedding yeah, list. Totally. Right? We're, we're going to be there. We'll be there. Will you, you sing at your wedding? <laughs> no. Do you not? Now, do you sing to her ever or no? You yes. Know, you do. Does she the night, the night I met her, I, I sang uh, Can't Help Falling in Love to her. Nice. Full song? Just straight no. eye contact the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> like, I I said we have to wait for the musical interlude. <laughs> <laughs> That's so See, funny. Singers man. got that. They got that. They can do it. Singers, oh, I mean, they always get. Yeah, laid. but there's something what? about Sal. Singers have it, but then when you have a voice like his, I feel like. As you have kids and you have responsibilities, it's harder to find those moments. So that's great you have that now. Yeah. Think about we it. We got to remember. We, we were stuck inside together for 18 months, and the cops weren't called once. No. That's great. And yeah, yeah, divorce or marriage, man, or kids. That's what happened out of the <laughs> pandemic. Divorce, kids, or marriage, honestly. Because if not, you're out. Like, right. You realize that if, if, if this is either it or it, or it isn't. Uh, if this is the end of the world... Do I? Who do I want to be with at the end of the world? Yeah, I want to be with Paul, but he's already taken. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. Trying to get work, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All means yeah, necessary. Like, That's know, why he's out, he's above he's above me on the, the depth you chart. You know, he don't know he don't know whose job he wants. He, yeah. You know, Howard Stern or Andy Cohen. Exactly. <laughs> I'm on the fence, depending on the pay, the rate, the day rate. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can I put you on the spot with your voice here, just yeah. to show people our show, sure. your voice? <laughs> Sal can make anything sound like sexy and sultry and jazzy, right? You're a crooner. Okay. You're a modern okay. day crooner. Okay. I've done this bit with other crooners. I'll do I did something similar with Michael Bublé, so we're gonna try it with you. Okay. okay. Sal, the voice is gonna make shitty things sound smooth. Okay, you ready? Oh, I love this. All right. Because oh, why not? You were in traffic on the way here, right? Uh-huh. No one likes traffic. Uh-huh. Sal, give me a phrase. I wanna hear. You make road rage traffic sound jazzy. I love it. Right? Yeah. I love it. Watch. Ready. Hit him. All right. I'm. 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 I'm thinking of the lyrics. Yeah, you're gonna. You know, take your time. it's it's very important. Yeah, yeah. Because I want to get the right words across. She's That's break. how you do good with enunciation. Get the hell you out know. of my way. What um, I say? Get the hell out of my way. It's a merge. It's not the SAT. Let's get a move on, you piece of garbage. You didn't even use your directional. <laughs> In other words, I am late. <laughs> In other words, Ant's getting car sick. <laughs> hey! Dang. Yes, see? Oh my That's, God. I want to show that. I love thank you for see, doing in that. LA, in LA, when I yell at people in traffic to go the hell back where they came from, I mean Indiana. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever use your voice, your powerful voice, like when you're in a bind like that? Like the people it's unassuming to you, the way you sound from Long Island. You ever go, I don't hey, want to be recognized when I'm cursing don't. someone out. No, no, no. I just no. want to teach you how to use a roundabout. Right, right. Go, hey, uh, get the hell out of my way. It's not because we don't like you. It's not because we have any sort of animosity towards you. It's because we want to help you. Right. We want to help you do better in this world. Yeah. Right. It's like your life is so you know, is so we solitary we now. Like that. With That's with, what I'm talking with about. Uber Eats and you know contactless this and you know you're, you're not really seeing people. Everything's over Zoom. Well, if we're learning anything from this, it's we need we need to pass this on. Like you need to have kids and pass on that we all matter and we all have to have relationships with one another and exist together coexist together like i i'm so afraid my daughter's not going to interact with anybody in 20 years it's going to be like B -d 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 -d, you know nothing's going to be there fran see, Leibowitz did a whole documentary on new york pretend it's a city pretend I it's a city that. pick your head up from whatever the hell it is you got going on in your life look around and realize there are eight million people around you and each one of them has something to do had just came from somewhere is heading to somewhere and be mindful of them before we uh, uh yeah. Before we let you go, Sal, tonight to, to go into traffic, I want everyone to, to see what you're up to. I'm putting you up on our screen here. Let's just watch your Instagram with you here. This is what we do on the show. Check it out. Yeah. Oh, it's him with some meat and cheese. Who knew? Oh, shocking. Look at that. What? Look at this. This is where you Oh, you're Michaels of Brooklyn here? That's this right. This looks amazing. Uh, got your off a little. Salva Bush, Valentinetti, and New Jersey Zone, they 
I love Sal. I love following you, man. You're always so fun, and you're look at this. This is a caddy. I love this guy. I he love this Tommy. He reminds me of Stevie B from Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie B's his favorite. You're doing such good bits, man. I love this stuff. Well, I owe that. I owe that to uh, to uh, Sher- Anthony Sherrata right here and, and Greg Heinrich, Thank of you. course. They're uh, basically. I, oh, there we go. Here's your singing here. With every show that I do, I notice that the that the audience gets younger and younger and younger. So how do you how do you stay with that audience? But but do TikTok, of course, uh, and and then of course YouTube. We have get in the car uh, with the which I love. Up, that show is Italian. great, man. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a great time. I, I get to share uh, uh, with people the experiences that I've had around this country. Now, there's a reason why I never travel alone. Right. Uh, besides besides not having to explain myself, <laughs> and not having to you know when I, when I can't find guys like you, you know how am I going to find anybody that I like? Yeah. So. It's it's nice to bring family or friends along with you. I love but, it. But more so than that, like my 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 number one companion on the road is my father, and the the key is that I get to share these experiences with people that I care about, with people that I I enjoy their company. I get to I get to show them uh, uh, and share with them the experiences that I've had, and show them the places that I've been. You know, it always feels good, especially as a guy from the East Coast, especially as an Italian, as a Paisan. You want to show people, like, you want to take people into a place, go, come on, you got to order this. Don't even, don't even, put the menu down. Sure, I'm going to order it. for yeah, you. That's it. That's you know, it. Or, or you got to see this. This is the best view ever. You know, like. Uh, don't worry about appetizers. I, I'll take I got care you. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever, yeah, do you ever think about, when, when was America's Got Talent? America's Got Talent was six years ago. So do you ever think, I mean, six years is a good chunk of time, but do you ever think about, I remember, I actually watched your Golden Buzzer clip today because I wanted to go back to that time. Do you ever go back to that time for you? Because this is an amazing moment. Your TV, national television, the show's it. view, that show is watched well, by millions and millions of people, it. right? That was your shot. I actually got teary-eyed today watching your clip. Your Golden texted Buzzer. Me. I texted goes, him, I was like, I'm literally, also, I'm like very sentimental as a dad. What's but that? Uh, do, to you by Hallmark. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever go back though and think now i mean you're a working touring musician you have you're selling tickets right yeah obviously you have goals and dreams you want to continue to do big things but do you think about where you're at now and 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 take that in and think about that shot then that really kind of put you on the map and, and fast forward to today every time i walk on stage it's amazing think about it you know i was at st john's i love st john's university in, in new york it's a great university but i i knew it wasn't for me I knew I was just kind of going through the motions. But you're so unsure of things when you're 20 years old. You've only really been in the real world for a couple of years, yeah. you know, driving a car and... Especially being Italian in mama's house. Right, it's, right, it's exactly. Fresh. Exactly. Um, so one of the things you don't realize is who you want to be in life. And do you want to be the guy who does the right thing and gets the job and and you know saves up and buys the house and keeps the job and maybe goes goes up a little bit you know even though there's this thing that you really really love and there's this thing that you keep telling yourself is a pipe dream you know you're never really sure of who who what you want to be doing when i was on stage in america's got talent just before the end of the song before the my way is even over there's only a 90 second version of my way it's two verses the beginning mm-hmm. and the end the crowd stands up and I remember the, the feeling of watching the, uh, the, the, the Pasadena Civic Center rise to its oh my feet. Oh, God. Of being, of telling me, oh, my God, I don't give a fuck what any of these people have to say about this. This right here is all the proof that I need. Yeah, that, yep. totally. That this is what I want to do. You're fucking beautiful. You got a yeah. great voice. And, and also I for mean, the... it's timeless. It's, it's timeless. And when Forever. when Heidi Klum hit the golden buzzer, I mean, I, I was emotional. Of course, the first thing out of my mouth that this is the first day of the rest of my life. Such a good line. Man. Every time I get on stage, whether it's in, you know, uh, Beverly, Massachusetts, or Appleton, Wisconsin, or Boca Raton, Florida, Boca. or Los Angeles, <laughs> about Italians. You know, Bel Air at the Vibrato. <laughs> Every time I walk on stage and the band is playing me on and, and I hit the first note and you see people lit up in front of you, it's, 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 it's mind-boggling. It's a, every, every time is a pinch-me moment. Yeah, that's cool. Think about it. I get to do something I love for a living. How many people 
are lucky enough to say that. How many people are as lucky as us? You know? Yeah, you're absolutely correct, man. I, and I love your story. And I love that you're continuing to do that on the road. And I think you carry that with everything you do, man. So keep doing what you're doing. I want you to remember this, too, because I think you're only going to do bigger and, and better things. You're going to keep touring. You're going to keep doing records. Cheers to that, and cheers to you, man. Seriously. And you're carrying the torch. Who else is like you? Uh, Jackie Gleason. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's dead, so we're drink, good. I'm drinking so much wine. Oh, a little more yeah. yeah. No, I, I, Sal, I mean, I mean it, man. You're, 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 you're true you're and true, man. It, 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 means, it means a lot. I appreciate you coming down, and I, I do think Paul, that I love you. I You're love you, man. This is the best. You, know, you bring I the mean, meat, I, the cheese, and I want everyone to know. Make sure you follow Sal the Voice. Keep him, keep up with him on TikTok. Keep up with all of his touring, his albums. You have any albums out now? Yeah, well, uh, uh, so I came here in the middle of the pandemic and did, a, did an album That's called right. Little Valentine. Amazing. Uh, Amazing. It got nominated, nominated for a traditional pop nice album. Uh, got nominated for uh, 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 traditional pop, uh, original, tra I, don't, I don't know what the cat, I really don't. I'm not really care. I don't really care about awards. I just, well, I, I just, right. uh, I, I just want to be known for more than just being some kid who was on uh, a game show and won a career. Sure. You know, we've been at this for a while. Uh, I've been, I've been working with so many great musicians. You know, I've learned a lot about the business over the last six years of going from not being a part of it to to being fully in it and fully immersed in it. You kind of hit the ground running. But uh, but now that now that I have the respect of my peers and and uh, you know the, I'm taken seriously as a musician, that's what I'm doing. I'm making records now. It's you amazing. Know, man. I gotta I gotta tell you, as the only other purebred Italian in the room, I want to <laughs> say you. you we're very, I'm very proud of you. You make us yep. look good. Yeah. Yeah. Why you? Why you? Too bad. Why you? The only <laughs> other purebred Italian cuz what you forget about? Oh, you're a purebred. He, yeah. Oh, he's a white Italian. I look Irish. Right? He's a white he's Italian. White Italian. I get it all the time. <laughs> From the north. He's, yeah. a, he's a bleached Italian. Yeah, he's north. <laughs> <laughs> he's the north. north. No. no, my family's from Agrigento, Sicily, actually. There you go. Oh, oh wow. All right. Shocking. You never he's know. Even, he's even. I'm Napoli Don. He's more south than us. Napoli Don. Yeah, yeah, with all the. Oh, sole mio, stan fronte a te. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <Keep going. laughs> I want to thank Sal for coming on the show. Can you, can you sing us out, Sal? Thank you so much. Nah, that was amazing. The best. Make sure to subscribe. Sole mio, stan fronte a te, stan fronte a te. Yes. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Sal. I love it. I love it. Thank you for all this, man. I love you, brother. Thank love you. you. Yeah.